Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in the Pax Britannica mod for Hearts of Iron 4, of course, which we're playing as Imperial Britain. But we are playing with HR and Victoria, we got English as an accepted culture with a couple others as well, but uh, North English, not Scottish. But we got to talk about Edward, as intent to marry. Edward, with the heir presumptive to the Governor General George, has approached his father with the intention to marry Prince Helen von Hohenzollern. The relationship between the two has largely been kept under wraps for the last few years, however. While the governor's health rapidly declining, Edward wishes to ensure his blessing before his condition degrades further. Though George's mental state is in decline, he retains his faculties enough to at least sign off on the marriage. Despite Edward's hopes, however, the open support of his father continues to elude him, and George lapses back into a malaise almost immediately after the conversation. Though he did not show it, his father's bouts of delusion clearly weighed on Edward, and he quickly left his father's side to announce his engagement. What would have been one of the most important days in his life would, as always, be tempered by his ever elusive father's emotional distance. At least not one of his mistresses. But if you want to read about how, what Britain is, please go ahead. We, man, we need to maintain his vast empire. Guide to Westminster through the 20th century. Crush a Frankish foe. Deal with the Pax, or the London market crash, and continue the Pax Britannica. So, learn about the history of Britain in the UKs. Please go ahead. But we're the dominant power in 1933. A great power. And there we go. Uh, disable them. Very important. Leave as is. Oops. Guess we'll not break the mod. Oh, we'll break the mod. Okay, leave as is. Cool. But we have no focus we can do. But we have post-war pacifism. 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 I can't speak. Um, we also have the land of open glory. Oh, boy. The economic stagnation. We have overconfident general staff, which is not good. We have exitorial dividends. And then we have head of the British Imperial Confederation, which hurts us. we got a lot of things that hurt us, man. But in the meantime, the end of an era. The Commonwealth of Carnegie has mourning today the following sudden death of Governor General uh, Prince George. The prince would serve as head of state of the Commonwealth since its inception, passed away peacefully in his sleep last night after a bout of pneumonia. In accordance with the provisions of the Carnegie Constitution, Prince George will be succeeded by the heir apparent to the British throne, Prince Albert. The new governor general is expected to arrive in Carnegie within the next few days to take up his duties and continue the strong tradition of leadership and service established by his predecessor. The prince's funeral will be held in London later this week, with dignitaries from around the world expected to pay, attend to pay their respects to a great leader and statesman. Another prince passes under the Queen's watch. So... He did, and there we go. The beginning of this year marks the 96th year of the reign of Queen Vic Empress Victoria. In 1909, she surpassed Louis XIV as the longest reigning monarch in recorded history, even surpassing German Kaiser Franz Joseph I. Politically neutral, the Queen saw the empire through the turmoil of the Great War, but the new turmoil looms on the horizon. The rebels of the new year have concluded, and it seems unlikely the Great War will only, well, the Great War will only, well, the only crisis of her reign, or be the only crisis, the economic crisis. It happened. It actually happened. The stock market has crashed when its value cut in half and many businesses at risk of collapse. We must do whatever it takes to fix this crisis or else we will face an uncertain and undesirable outcome in the future. So, right now, uh, we're going to go with... Someone's been, at the time of this recording, and asking me a whole bunch as to whether or not uh, we will uh, do a reformist Britain path and at this point we might as well. Um, I don't really use dual pods. Let's, let's get some infantry. Let's send some infantry to the Kingdom of Italy because they kind of like us. Maybe they like us, so we might want to kind of like them. So, uh, we have a little bit of fuel, and we have, can send three things of plane. That's not bad. So we'll send one thing of fighters, and give me casts. A little bit of casts. Mm, why not? There we go. Have fun. They have 200, but we're doing a decent amount of damage. That's what I really want. Oh, look at this. The Royal Marriage of Prince Edward. Dignitaries from across Europe arrived in London today to celebrate the Royal Marriage of Prince Edward to Helen von Hohenzollern. One of several princesses of Prussia, Helen's marriage to the British Prime Further, or Prince Further, cements the ties between the British Royal Family and Germany. While well, not a member of the Germany's ruling royal family, the Habsburgs, Helen's descendants from the Hohenzollern family of Brandenburg, Prussia, is no less prestigious. More importantly, the Hohenzollern's Protestantism is much less of a barrier to a royal marriage than the Catholic Habsburgs. As if the royal family wasn't already German enough. Oh, interesting. Nice. Very good. So what can we do here? What kind of mess can we get ourselves into? Entrenchment, max entrenchment. Uh, Alan broke them. And uh, cavalry experience. There you go. You're gonna hurt yourself, whatever. Ah, what do we have here? So, the House of Commons, we have support. Workers' unions do not support us. Uh, oh, we get some civvies. That's kind of nice. Offer concessions to the NPP. National Progressive Party? No, the National People's Party. Reform, huh? Report Imperial Reform. 
Imperial reform, I'll become more reformist. Promote imperial conservatism. Well, we're going to go with reform. Imperial tension will increase. Matters of the state. As the preeminent global power, Britain's numerous domestic and foreign policy responsibilities. Regardless of the political situation of the nation, these responsibilities must be handled. Britain has numerous concerns across the planet on the continent, and with the tide of the world shifting towards war once again, we'll do what we can to safeguard our interests. Okay, the Nicaraguan can Canal. The Nicaragua Canal Project first began in the mid 20s and created a bridge between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. While construction slowed in the stagnation of the imperial economy, the British government's constant insistently reaffirmed their commitment to completing the project. Once completed, Britain will be able to move shipping between the eastern frontier and Europe much more efficiently, as well as use levies, useful, useful levies, levy useful taxes for the canal's use. Hmm. Managing the military, of course, sounds pretty normal too. So, um, I don't mind spending at least a couple cities. Work setbacks in Nicaragua. 50 days faster. Well, here, have a thousand half hour. And then next we're going to do offer stuff, and show attention, promote imperial reformism. Well, let's start working on some more military guys first. I think that'd be for the best, probably. Are they attacking or are they getting attacked? Where are you at? You're taking forever to get up there, so. Edison introduces mining androids. During a telescreen press, uh, press conference earlier today, a representative of Edison Imperial Electric announced plans for new mining androids to be introduced across the British Isles. These androids, with minimal human involvement, will dramatically improve safety in mines by reducing the potential loss of human life. The droids operate through a series of remote wire networks that allow them to maintain power deep even underground, dramatically reducing cost and upkeep. While the British Coal and Steel Corporation has not commented on the development, the English and Welsh Coal Miners Union have gone into uproar. They claim these androids are little more than a cost-cutting retaliation by Edison Electric for the last year's general strike. The WUP waited in on the issue as well, claiming that these sorts of automation changes are increasingly threatening the jobs of the British people. It's keeping a good British worker safe. Get that XP, my boys and girls. Or my boys. Do we have... How's planes looking? Oh, we definitely need more planes to war. You know what? Let's change one of these guys out. Let's get there. Give me another fighter just in case. A little bit less damage, maybe, but then being able to actually fight enemy planes will be better overall. Oh, layoffs are bound. In the week since Edison Electric introduced the new mining androids, there's been a rush of layoffs across Britain, and a large number of mines bought out by the Edison Electric in the last decade have had nearly two, dec two thirds of the workers laid, uh, workforce laid off. Edison representatives. I've stated that the changes due to the reduced need for the large human workforce in the mining operations, although the miners' union claimed that the move is getting more retaliation to break the unions. Fights broke out at multiple mines between Edison Security and British workers, escalating a full-blown riot at one mine in Wales. Workers subdued guards and proceeded to burn and dismantle the mining droids for several minutes until the police intervened. Wait, hang on a second. What the barnacles is going on? Anti-automation. Oh, there goes the Wu-Chang Revolution. Uh, Anti-automation riots in Cardiff. Anti-automation riots began to escalate across Wales, with the most intense being in the cities of Cardiff and Swansea. Riders have been pillaging. All local shops and destroying any androids they can't get their hands on. Even the augmented are under fire, and the local constabulary, constabulary, constabulary have reported multiple assaults and even the murder of a veteran with an arm replacement. Emergency personnel in the area being stretched thin, and parliament has been demanding that we suspend the current circumstances. Local home guard garrisons available nearby and ready for deployment, but a military police action could cause more harm than good. Perhaps letting the riots fizzle out is the best option. And to China. We're here to meddle in your affairs. I don't want to tackle just willy nilly. I don't want to waste valuable lives like that. So you're going to go up there, actually. And you're going to go up there. Cardiff and Swansea in shambles. Due to a refusal to intervene in the ongoing crisis in Wales, Cardiff and Swansea suffered extreme damage. Local constabulary were able to bring the riots to an end, but at a considerable cost. Over 100 have been left injured. Uh, multiple fires have severely damaged the city center, and this anti-automation sentiment has exploded across aisles. Perhaps we should have intervened. Well, we'll remove economic stagnation, at least. We'll go up a cup of tea here, too. Nice. Humans refuted. There you go. General election. The general elections are finally here, and the election shall decide the fate of not only Britain and county, but the rest of the empire as a whole. All political parties are on the spectrum, from the workers' union to the NPP, are vying for power with the varying policies that may strengthen or shaken the empire, so vote wisely. Picking up the pieces. 
Will the Prime Minister acknowledge the fact that his policy of economic isolation and his ignorance of British reliance on German demand has caused the crisis? Cried uh, Major Clement Attlee, which I think I'm saying that wrong, the leader of the opposition. Prime Minister Douglas Hay just sat disappointed on his bench. Attlee was a fine soldier and would have made a fine tour, yet he had given in to the whims and wishes of the socialists, calling themselves the masses. How could they not see that his policy of economic imperial isolationism kept Britain from suffering during the last 20 years, and how could they bypass this mere fact? To make matters worse, Hay, who the rumor of support from his own side of the House of Commons, which deeply troubled him. Hay, although old, knew he could not abandon the sacred duty of ministership, so he rose and spoke. As long as the people of this great nation have faith in the national coalition, they shall know that we will fix a slight economic ripple like we did the last time under this government. Hay knew that the national coalition was his only way to keep her in safe, and he intended to keep it that way. At least the coalition is still intact. Nice. The coalition collapses. Hay accepted his uh, aide and advisor, Edmund Blackadder, and more importantly, a trusted friend since his time in the military. Hay knew what was coming, only Blackadder had the guts to tell him bad news due to his extensive friendship with a former field marshal. Douglas was more, more than enough of the Whigs in the National Coalition had refused to pledge support to our party's combined efforts and to make the national, which made, uh, to make the National Coalition defunct. Are they actually winning here? Look at that. <clears throat> Haig sat there downfounded. I'll dare they betray him at Burns Hour of Need. Hay grasped the left breast where a sudden pang of pain, pain formed inside his heart. Hay remembered the last time this occurred when he heard the couch trees of the Iberian campaign, a scar not yet healed. Are you all right, Douglas? Blackadder asked with concern. Hay nodded and grasped the table for support before looking at his trusted confidant and murmuring, Oh, for God's sakes. Oh, boy. We're only having a good time here. The general uh, elections begin. Extra, extra crowd the paper boy, the Piccadilly Circus. Due to the collapse of the National Coalition, the Queen's order with advice from his Prime Minister, Anthony Eden, who succeeded to his predecessor, Douglas Haig, over the latter's health complications, that a snap of general election shall occur. The paper boy was still well due. <clears throat> to the sudden news of both the Haig's deterioration in health and Eden's first act to call a snap election to test the British public support in, the, in his new role as their Prime Minister. The paper boy looked around after a brief spot of shouting slowing to see London bustle with activity. Both were put up with the WUP in the circus while NPPB Black Church tore them down and replaced them with their own propaganda. Conservative speakers spoke at the corner and occasionally followed the crowd of political beliefs, much to the boy's amusement, however. The paper boy also knew the tense atmosphere in the crowd. What the result the paper boy knew that this election would decide the fate of Britain in the years to come for better or for worse. Let's see how many papers we can sell. Oh, political power, finally. But we're still in Italy here. But in the meantime, we've got some other things to uh, cook. Alright, so what do we got? Because we can do the Senate expedition. We can go to war with Yemen and all these people, so. Um, we're gonna go to, maybe to Yemen first. How many divisions do we have coming over here? That's a good question. Or a Shriek. Yeah. We we'll need to go do all this type of stuff. You guys are just hanging out. You all figure it out. Go over Jordan, maybe a little bit. Let him do all that type of stuff. Um, can you guys actually win there? Yeah, it doesn't really look like it. But you guys might be able to win right there, maybe. Maybe helped out, maybe a little bit. The general election in Scotland. Due to Scotland being the least populated area in Britain, apart from Wales, which is associated with Northern England. Oh, look at that. Oh, they're fighting up here, too. Um, the region is normally first to declare the results from the general election. Scotland's a major battleground state between all parties in the general election. It's expected that the Tories will lose the majority in Scotland due to the effects of the Great Slump and that another party will see the Tory majority. The results have just come through and the Tories maintain their sovereignty. The WUP takes Scotland. Takes a shock victory. Well, WUP. The rise of the swing scene. First propaganda always emphasized the so-called mix and pot of the empire. No development demonstrates its further than the growth of uh, London's underground music culture. Highly influenced by immigration from America's during the Bleeding South, swing music has become a craze among uh, British youth. Emphasizing big bands, trumpets, and string compositions, swing music developed as a local phenomenon among black American immigrants and soon mixed with the cultural milieu of Great Britain. Taking influence from everything from a German orchestra to fo local folk tunes, the development of swing music in Britain is birthed among something wholly unique. And despite the best efforts of, mor of moral censors, it seems rowdy kids can't get enough of it. You like jazz? Well, we'll, we'll see. Launch of the Epsilon One, which sees some interesting news from Carnegie, which uh, or a think tank funded by the EIEC and Carnegie Steel was able to launch a small rocket containing a similarly small radio operated drone. We're going to go to war with Yemen first. While the launch itself is only a minor success, research has proven the potential for launching a functioning satellite into orbit. Furthermore, it may very well mean the potential to launch a living human being into the orbit. It's coming clear to both ourselves and Rob's on the continent that this technology cannot be allowed to go to waste. Britain's early frontiers came in Africa and the Americas, and we ensued. We're sure that we can secure ourselves in those regions. So how, now, however, we have a t new scramble on our hands. Eden Jail could be the first standard. To touch the stars, no matter how much blood, sweat, or tears you need him, 
You know, for to lose a chance of conquering the cosmos. <coughs> oh, Jesus. With the launch of Epsilon 1 in New Alexandria, the viability of a rock propelled craft reaching the atmosphere and entering orbit has been proven possible, at least on paper. While the launch itself failed, limited success has proven the potential of such enterprises. The nation is not the first to realize this. We must capitalize on the situation as quickly as possible. Britain and Russia have already begun plans to launch their own craft to succeed where Epsilon failed. If we fail to acquire a hegemony over these heavens, we may face a catastrophic orbital gap with a rival in order to win the orbital wars. We must successfully launch communication satellite and human crewed satellite in orbit. Research points. This will remove all currently chosen records of Hot all components. View component parts. Oh my god. Solid, solid fuel compartment. A basic test engine. Initiate the launch. Northern England is a land of rolling hills and faith mixed with the industrial struggle of factories and workers. The Tories managed to hold the North in a previous election, a paradox in itself considering how much the areas are poor workmen areas. However, well, the great slump and the, uh, the North is up for grabs at all parties, including the MPP, where the masses are starting to lose faith with the WUP and conservatives. What are the outcomes expected that most of the North will swear allegiance to only one party? Rats across America, nice. Well, we're ready to go, right? General election, South England. The south of Great Britain is the only heartland. It's heartland not only Great Britain, but the empire itself. It's to no one's surprise that the South is the most crucial part of the race with the wealthy areas in London. The capital of the Imperial Federation itself is up for grabs. In the last election, the South was almost split evenly between the Tories and the WUP with pockets of MPP in the more conservative and remote areas, such as the country. However, experts predict that with the South, we'll only go to one party, which will pay the path to the victory for the victorious party. Results of the election. Following all the seats have been elected and the votes counted, the Queen Empress secretly informed beforehand about the results of this 1933 election. Britain awaits for the final result. The Empire is behold his breath on who the new king of the castle is, and the world watches with concerned eyes on his former and formal ruler. And the winner is the WP wins. Oh, who could have seen that one coming? Not us, I tell you, not us. Um, where are the planes at? There you go. And you're going to come over here. Atlee, which I think I've seen that right, maybe? Uh, secretary ran to the room, a young uh, Miss Ada Hughes, an orphan of a fellow soldier, who was killed in Iberia. He took N as his personal assistant and came flying into his office. Miss Hughes, compose yourself, Atlee remarked, almost make it, mistaking his secretary as a car driving into his room. I'm sorry, Mr. Atlee, for my excitement, but this is truly importantly, as uh, this is truly important. A sheepish grin arose from her face before throwing a copy of the Daily Mirror on his desk, or should I say, Prime Minister. Atlee jumped up in surprise, his face was plastered from the front of the paper, declaring him the Prime Minister. Allie never thought he would win the election, except shorten, except shorten the Tory majority, so he may hold them in account for their actions. But now he'd won the bloody thing with the majority. He couldn't help himself, but uh, and hugged his young companion with tears in his eyes before blurting out, "Now he can truly create a land of hope and glory." Ada or, uh, could only hope, could only smile to her prime minister, but more importantly, friends triumph for the working class of Britain. Onwards to New Jerusalem. All right, so we have our focuses here. Your election. There is one. I might have. The general election is finally here, and this election shall decide the fate of not only Britain and her economy, but the rest of the empire as a whole. All political parties in the spectrum, from the workers' union to the NPP, are vying for power with the varying policies. They may strengthen their shaking the empire to vote wisely. London calling. London calling to the faraway towns. Now war is declared, and battle comes down. London calling to the underworld. Come out, you other cupboard, you boys and girls. Uh, worker Union victory. For the first time in British and Imperial history, the Workers' Union Party, known as the WUP, have won the general election. The party of the working class captured the hearts of the empire. However, old party grievances are already coming to life between the moderate Clement, or Clement Attlee and the radical Harry Pollitt, which with up seems to be more than a party leadership at state, but rather than the course of Britain itself. Reds and Persian Parliament. The so-called Grand Coalition that was the legacy of Douglas II had been shattered, and now the Workers' Unionist Party stands with the majority of the parliament after a stunning snap election victory. A Big Ten Coalition of Democratic Socialists, Balku uh, Balkanists, Bakunists, and state socialists. The WP has, has long been relegated to minorities in the parliament. 
However, uh, having finally seized their chance to form a new government, many are eager to see what Britain's new left-wing government is planning. Alanis worried that the split between party hardliners and moderates may prove catastrophic. A new direction for the Empire? The automation crisis is now in full swing, and Britain's caught up in the midst. With the EIEC and the public fighting for support, we need to decide how we're going to respond to the situation. It's clear that the crisis has significantly impacted the country, but we need to conduct a full audit to get a clear picture of precisely what we're dealing with. Taking stock of our assets. Significant investment uh, that the EIEC maintains in the nation. It's important to get a clear idea of where the iconic economic situation lies. Social impact. Established in 1929, the British Surrealist Group finally organized the first official showing in London as a uh, select audience, of course. During the event, the group unveiled a short uh, series of pieces alongside a lengthy document detailing the so-called Doctrine of Inexplicability. Uh, in Britain, the Surrealist movement remains nascent, but since the late 20s, it has been greatly expanded by the introduction of Spanish and French exiles. The most notable of these is the Spanish painter Salvador Domenech, whose bizarre pieces and eccentric behavior form the backbone of the group's published manifesto. Largely existing is a rejection of post-war British art culture, which had shifted towards realism and darker themes as a reflection of the country's economic malaise. Surrealism, or rather, rejects ideas of realism, and instead focuses purely on the fantastical. The first exhibition of the group has garnered both praise and criticism, and as more traditional voices in the art world decry the concept as art without meaning. Are we cool yet? Not yet. Well, we could try it. Um, so the Whigs are neutral. Tories do not support us at all. Oh, 100%. Support us. Right, nice. We can do that too. And people reform stuff. Oh, we're really, we probably close out of that one. Because we want to report, 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 increase, and promote imperial reformism, but we'll do that later. Put impression on the construction teams. Uh, ah. Yeah, definitely don't do that one. Managing the military. That's fine. I forgot too. For the Queen's opposition. Clive Wiggum. Private secretary strode towards his queen's study. The door is left wide open, so he merely entered before announcing his presence to the queen. You might have heard that you refused to give your royal assent to the new elected government, Clive inquired with curiosity. My dear secretary, as queen of Britain and all her dominions, it falls to me, if, if not ceremonially, to act as a shepherd and a role model. Clive barely had time to agree before Victoria continued. However, it has come to my attention that this current elected government is nothing but a fraud and a wolf in sheep's clothing to the British people. The Queen's surprise, Clive spoke immediately after his Queen finished his speech, Wolf or not, Your Majesty. The British public have voted them in, and it's your duty to respect the people's decision, no matter how they choose, Your Majesty. The Queen looked at his secretary with an aura that Clive would never feel again. It was as, as he was dismissed from the room, Clive exited out his answer, the new government is formed without incident. The Queen refuses and proposes a coalition government. Tough, Queen, tough. The people have voted. So it's only 1933 still. But we're going to go with this first. Now what can we do here? Can we get anybody here? Army planning plus 0.3. Division defense versus planning speed. Planning speed is okay. Defense would be pretty decent too. Um, do we have anyone here for armor? Army? No? Okay. Here, military theorists, land auction costs. You know what? We're just going to go ahead and go with... Defense is always nice. I like defense. Let's go with defense. Automation crisis. The death of Marshal Haig. Oh boy. I was reaching into the late morning, and Douglas Haig had still not left his bedroom. Whilst there wasn't a strict disturbance, no strict no disturbance policy under the Haig household, the maid responsible for morning duty, I thought it was best to not awake the marshal from his seemingly deep slumber. At around uh, early noon, a loud thought had echoed from Haig's bedroom, and in a rush that the maid went to investigate the sound, I was horrified to see the marshal himself half dead lying in a pool of his own urine. Immediately, she left out a scream of horror. A few hours later, after a medical examination, it was declared that Haig had passed away because of a heart attack. Unfortunate. I hope this doesn't backfire on us. Oh boy. I should have seen that one coming. The National Recovery Act. The government with the majority in Parliament has passed the National Recovery Act to Britain's relief. The Act ensures that the British government would allocate large numbers of funds to public employment schemes while also implementing tax reform and new trade policies to ease the burden created by the Great Slump, which will guarantee. Uh, this is about the first major act implemented by the new government to handle the crisis and certainly not to the last to deal with the depression caused by the Great Slump. The Act has passed. Wow, we lose quite a bit of stuff for 30 days. That's okay. Hey, that's not bad. Yes.
And we're at war with them too. Nice. That won't be offensive. Um, God, I hope it goes okay. Well, at least the progressive uh, guys like us too. Interesting. Matters of the state, Operation Heligoland. Peace. It's okay now, construction. Failure to launch. God dang, the rocket was, we invested so much into it has failed to launch today due to mechanical error. The happened sword on the rocket until time for it to blast off, accidentally crush a rocket like an empty RC cam. Seems as if some mechanic used a negative value instead of a positive value for the programming of the umbilical cords holding the rocket up. All of our work is for nothing. We'll have to go back to the drawing board. What a waste. God dang it. Well, that sucks. I hope I'm doing it right. I don't know if I am or not. Do we need... Oh, we need more command power. Well... well then. More attack? 5% more, more attack's not bad. Deck size... Plus 0. Well, that's great. Shield gain's not bad either. Oh, wow. Imperial Broadcasting Corporation. Staff Imperial Telescreen Company? Holy crap. Plus... Plus 0.5 weekly stability. That's actually really strong. Honestly, two more civvies. Agroponics. What is agroponics? Which one's that one? More food. We don't, do we need more food? I don't think we need more food. Yeah, we're fine on agriculture, so I want more civvies. I'm going to dump stuff in here for now. That's pretty nice. How many more rations do we have? Keep grinding. Nice. Nice. Beautiful. And we're getting at the party. The Workers' Union Party has only just won their first election. Already they're having the trouble of ideological splits in the party. Once United lose all the gains we gained from the central government, uh, government election to general election. To maintain the support we receive from the public, even if that means prominent party heads butt over it. Successful launch. Ah, a constructed rock was able to launch successfully, reaching the Earth's atmosphere. Any components on the rocket can now be activated, or otherwise research modules will begin transmitting their data. Excellent work, boys. Choosing the next Prime Minister. Having secured their first electoral mandate, the Rocker Union Party has voted to approach Clement Attlee to lead the first socialist government in recent British history. Whether Attlee will be able to survive this historic administration, however, will seem re remains to be seen. They all live with Attlee. Nice. Okay, Oswald, we'll see. Where do we get to see Attlee? By territories, autonomous stuff? Resolving the Irish question, the Irish citizens' army has been defeated, which leads to a question of Ireland's future within the British Empire. The Irish autonomous provinces were originally established to prevent the, these kinds of uprisings, but it seems uh, that Irish rebellion is an inevitable issue regardless. There has been some proposals on how we can resolve the situation. The first and obvious uh, is to simply reinstate the autonomous government, albeit with slightly more oversight from the British forces already deployed in the region. The also free state will be reintegrated into the Irish autonomous provinces as well. Alternatively, a proposal also could be integrated into the United Kingdom instead. The sectarian conflicts in the region must, might be later better controlled under direct British administration. The most extreme proposal from the Imperial Hardliners is for Ireland to be re-annexed re into the United Kingdom entirely, a move that would likely inflame Anglo-Irish tensions even further. We should choose carefully, as without further antagonizing the Irish certainly might not be a good idea. I would love this one, but we're not going to do that one. Ulster, Self-Defense Force, integrate Ulster, but remain in the autonomy. The autonomous provinces shall be maintained. I'll love that one for this one. I, my reason is less lag. You guys are here. You're gonna train. You're gonna train too. Construction one, nice. And could do construction two, but another one instead. Up next will be these guys. 
I'm a shriek. We do both at the same time, why not? Good, good, good. Oh, what are you guys doing? Nothing. So you guys go there too. They'll be fine over here, probably. Oh. What are we missing here? Ledger automats, motorized, infantry. Oh, we're actually missing infantry equipment. That's interesting. Do that real quick. 15. It was successful. Engine. Ooh. And fuel. Records. Concerns about Mosley. Oswald Mosley, the ever ambitious uh, protege of current Prime Minister Clement Attlee, has taken to his position in the new ministry with enthusiasm. A bit too much enthusiasm, some seem to think, though. Mosley's particular skills have led Attlee to put him in the head of the WP's economic reforms, and some members of the party begin to raise concerns that Mosley is using his position to consolidate power. Particular concerns are raised that Mosley is preparing to orchestrate some sort of party coup. As his close associates tell us, he's been going to see Atli as a threat to his own personal ambitions. If we don't put a stop to this power jockeying now, could have serious consequences for the first WUP government. Well, I'm sure that he's aware of the consequences of disloyalty versus his. I'm sure it's nothing to be worried about. Hmm. I always like him a lot. Can he actually coup us? The New Jerusalem. Oh, maybe we should have sidelined him. Hmm. Has Oswald Mosley active? Okay, interesting. The useful idiot. I'm not sure. Well, we should be on this one instead. Says so, 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 He's a dangerous man, a threat against what Burns stands for. Even if many in the WP disagree with Lenin principles, we'll sideline him and make him a foot in the history of our party, face some hardline Marxists in the very heart of the imperial government. I kind of want to do this one, maybe. Or nationalize the failed companies. Many companies have gone bust in these hard times. As representatives of the working class, we should nationalize these companies to prevent more unemployment in the nation. Also, while reforming these companies to provide, provide benefits to the British society. Let's go with that one for now. I don't know. We'll see. Successful launch, good. And engine pods. Oh, an intermediate engine. Go parts. Parts. Music redefined, unit the party. Dang, so, oh, we're like negative zero. Wow, that's pretty bad. Um, if that's the case, volunteer only. We could raise it, but in the meantime, Mauser is at peace with these guys. Armor and HP is okay. Submersible teams. Agility is always good. I'll go with that, why not? And then. 
Ooh, I like this one. The National Industrial Plan, with many parts of the country reeling from the recent act recession. Which implemented government funded and implemented plan to bring new job opportunities in the country while also alleviating the poverty situation. With the government funded schemes to finally sort out the industrial mess the country's in. MREs, nice. Agroponics, we don't really need that, so. Oh, we're doing okay for now. Is that war? Oppression Cromwell. Demand Syrian rights. Syria needs to exist. So at war with Mashriq anyway, so. in y'all should be fine there you go information discussion independence party ever since the unruly part of ever the most unruly part of Britain proper the various political parties in Scotland have long agitated for varying degrees of independence or autonomy for Britain just today members of the Scottish Independence League and the movement for Scottish autonomy announced their merger to form the Scottish Independence Party or SIP a big ten coalition of Scottish conservatives liberals nationalists and progressives SIP a clearly dysfunctional at best what was most notable about this that uh, the party unilaterally agitates for Scotland to, at the very least, be granted Commonwealth status and a seat in the per Imperial Parliament. Now that such an idea has been pushback from the English political scene, though some radical elements in the WP have argued in favor of this devolution policy. What a joke. War, Nordics, Danes. I'm going back for now. Can we help you guys out, maybe? Oh. Well, yeah, they, they're like, yeah, heck yeah. Um, honestly? Back at war. Because we're going to run out of fuel very soon. Pliable regime, huh? What do we have else here? So we need an engine. Fuel. Engine. Hmm. A stellar research module. Install basic test engine. Increases failure chance by 25%, but decreases failure chance by 10%. That's interesting. Go buy weapons for speed. You know, screw this one. Screw this one instead. He dies, way of the future, decrease women in the workplace, improve our community, current reform. Waterlog, Bureaucracy instructs once again. It appears as if the, the rains, uh, if rains the night before launch, damage rockets electronics, resulting in failure to launch. R&D is keen to smuggle, you know, how this is uh, at least not their fault. The fending members of the R&D are, are probably encouraged not to let the door hit them on the way out. It's slippery when wet. Oh boy. Well, 5%. It's not bad. Engine, fuel, drive. And then, yeah, 
Maybe I'll stop. I can wait just a little bit. There we go. Successful launch. Nice. Well, your parts. No fuel left, but whatever. Pretty normal for us, probably. Nice. And... Good. A successful launch. So that's the damage. Metro takes control. Can't go do that one. 34 MPL Congress. The Lion's Claws. Britons remain the world's power for over three centuries. Both their navy and armed forces are some of the finest ever they grace. Those rule on military high command. Um, plans to keep in the way, however. Despite our military superiority, divides begun to form between the young and old. Some of the British military favor more reformist doctrines than those from the First Great War, while they support more traditional improved doctrines. Most of the influence of the party has grown out of control, and now has made them this move. Leveraging support from an informal coalition of radicals and anti atley moderates, it was attempted to force Atlee to resign. And without proceeding, Mosley would undoubtedly win the WP leadership election, securing control of the party, and prime leadership, a prime ministership, at the cost of public credibility. The ball is now in Atlee's. Core. As, as whether or not he can maintain his support from the party remains to be seen. Move to success. Oh no. I apologize if you want to just go down that way, but now we've been cooed. Develop an advanced engine. Fuel parts. Liquid fuel. Or components. Critical forming. All right. Yes. Fuel. Good. Nice. Taking stock of the damages after an extensive audit. It's become clear that the automation crisis has heavily impacted the British country. The EIEC. Uh, shutting down of mines across southern England and Wales has caused a significant spike in unemployment, leading to the protests and demands for action against the company. Exacerbating matters is the general economic malaise the country's been experiencing for the last decade. As a shock of the coal shutdowns, it caused an overall reduction in consumer spending. Not a full-blown recession, it certainly means our stagnant economy has degraded significantly, even from just a few years ago. This is less than stellar, man. This sucks. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, infantry leader, which is pretty good. Buenos Aires, not bad. There you go. That is what we've been waiting for. We only have four of these guys, but whatever. Nice. 
Good. Oops. Sure, why not? Quadrupods. Well, let's see. Honestly, we don't need duopods. Oh, quadrupods. Those are the real fun ones. You want to keep attacking us there? I'm kind of okay with that. Oh, crap. They put a satellite in orbit already. Good situation. Reaching out to a contact in the EIEC. The automation crisis seems to be affecting them just as much as it is us. There have been numerous internal protests of the company over the automation policy, leading to the loss of several senior staff at the British headquarters. Now, if you want to do these two, please go ahead. It seems that the crisis has actually weakened the EIEC's hold over the British economy, for better or for worse. If we're to make a move to break free of the EIEC's influences, now's the time. Not great, but not terrible. Lion's Claws. Satellite in orbit. Combat satellite. So we need this one next time again. I've never done this before, so I apologize for. Being a bit behind on everything here. Communication lost. An electrical malfunction temporarily disabled the rocket remote rocket's remote end controls. Upon being re enabled, the rocket and payload were found to be completely missing. The already is split on how this occurred and where the rocket itself went, and as all calculations suggest, this scenario was impossible. Something this some undiscovered electrical phenomenon has occurred that warped the location of the rocket in space time. Some of the extraterrestrials are involved while others arguing that Tesla himself has cursed the rocket. Drone investigation indicates the control module is likely not bolted down properly. Any more conspiracy theories? Probably. Tonga campaign stalemate. Seems we've been unable to break the lines of the North Vietnamese Army, they're unable to break our lines. That's clear we can no longer continue to campaign in the North Vietnamese territory. I have to, them, I have to leave them. That has to be not too much strain on our finances because of the war. You win this round, North Vietnam. Withdrawal? We'll not abandon them. Support for the mandate. Kurt Spores reached the uh, uh, office of Sir John French, the commissioner of the British Expeditionary Force in Palestine. The report delivered by agents of the Imperial Security Service contained a series of reports by Jordanian and Palestinian travelers that a white man traveling alone in the Jordanian desert has been spotted on multiple occasions. One on indicated a high probability that the man being referred to may be the missing British Colonel Tom, uh, Thomas Edward Lawrence, though I cannot confirm that this with absolute certainty. Lawrence vanished from this post posting in the crucial states following the end of the hostilities uh, and the Great War. The reason for its disappearance is unknown, but colleagues attested that to the ISS. The service during the North African campaign, the era of peacekeeping operations may have pushed him over the edge. Lawrence's fascination with the Middle East is well known, and the ISS agents have been combing the Arab kingdoms for almost two decades in an effort to locate him. Now, this is to be believed, Lawrence may have been hiding underneath their noses this entire time. Our ISS office in Jerusalem is advised we dispatch an agent to Ord Jordan to locate this unidentified man post haste, as we may lose a chance to find him with the brewing chaos in the Near East. Sure, why not? Go for Hanoi. Got any beer to launch. Opening the 1934 Imperial Conference. After the Washington Rebellion in America was put down in the establishment. 
and the Imperial Parliament. After the revolt, which soon transformed the Imperial Federation, Britain has seen fit to call roughly every four or five years representatives from all dominions and managed to gather and discuss the future of the Empire. The 1934 conference will be like no other, with Britain staggering from economic hardships with an ever more assertive American Commonwealth in the Federation's affairs, which may topple Britain's hegemony of our empire. So naturally made the 34 conference a more faithful decision for the empire, instead of a simple checkup that the previous conferences shared. Simply to simplify imperial politics, two leading factions have formed two factions, Neo-Victorians and the Enlightened Imperialists, in which the former believes in a centralization of the empire under Britain, and expanding white mandates, and the latter believing in a more liberal era of the empire to benefit all British subjects, white and black, and also to split imperial power throughout the Federation. If you want to read this one, please go right ahead. I'm meeting the dunes. After almost a week of travel, ISS agents or uh, uh, arrived at the camps out of the Jordanian desert where it was believed Lawrence was hiding out. Evidence of a recent habitation was found, particularly several open cans of food and a recently snuffed out campfire. Before the agents could investigate further, the cock cocking of a pistol drew the agents' attention to their flank. They were masked in the amber glow of the setting desert sun, said T.E. Lawrence, although at first he was hardly recognizable. Dirty, unshaven, and draped in Arab garb, he hardly looked like anything like the file photo the agents had been given. I figured people come looking for me eventually. We're the Imperial Intelligence. We've been asked to bring you in for resign. Or I'm not going back. Not after what we did. The agents looked among one another, and after a tense silence, the head of the operation spoke, hand leaning near his revolver. We knew did the guess back, but I just shoot him. Debates on Dominion Reform. The question of the Dominion Reform has come up in the, in the conference. Many natives in older dominions, such as the United Commonwealth, believe that due to the geographical distance and cultural differences, the mandate should govern with more autonomy and power now so that each dominion can deal with the populace's certain needs. This naturally caused anger to the old guard of the empire and, and many white colonists in the new territories, such as Africa, said that decentralizing the federal, Imperial Federation away from Britain will be no different than independence, while the white colonists fear that by giving direct power to the new mandates, the governing authorities might favor the natives or the Anglo settlers. Whatever the case, it is up to the British Prime Minister to have the final say to dominion reform. Should we follow? Gonna greater autonomy. Well, I'll probably go with this one. Debates on economic reform. <laughs> Natural imperial economics and finance came up in the 1934 conference. The Enlightened imperialists wished for the mandates and dominions to be self sufficient and away from the pillaging hands of London so that they can stand on their own two feet for the empire. The old guard countered this with a logical point of trade. The emperor's built on trade by simply throwing away the resources from the colonies needed for the factories in London and the United Commonwealth of America, then what's the point of having the empire in the first place? The debate has also been quite fierce, and only deciding vote from Britain will finish the result either deciding that the empire will revolve around imperial trade and the city of London, or being more self standing establishment for the co equal community than the empire. Decentralize the economy and focus on the local development. Debates on the military. Well, that's happened to come up, and most likely the most important due to both old and new threats popping up is the Imperial Federation's stance on the military. Traditionally, when war was a breakout, Britain would raise regiments from all parts of the empire alongside its standing army to wage war. However, after the Great War, many parts of the empire creating their own standing army, such as the United Commonwealth of America's Royal Army and the Kenyan Security Forces. The old guard have argued that there should only be the one army, which matches the Federation's model of one nation, one king. However, the Alliance Imperialists have argued that having each man having its specialized military to fit for a certain military role will allow for more efficient and effective fighting forces around the globe in defense of empire. It's a choice, Prime Minister, to decide on the matter in the course of the empire the lasting a debating choice. Choose well for the fate of civilization hangs in the balance. I got one too. Oh, you kill your recruitable population. Oh god. Super good spot, four percent. Twelve hour workday. Turing Thinker Project. Automation is for the future. It's EIEC's decision. Return them. Introduce filler jobs. Forest mines open. Hmm. Our wayward sons in America, or a little subject in the dark continent. to the Far East. Colonial Education Bureau. Many subjects of the Empire remain uneducated and barbaric in culture. Oh. We shall teach them the true joy of education while also boosting state productivity with millions of newly educated souls lending their mind to help the innovation and creation of a new Britain and the Empire to benefit one nation under the crown. Oh, so I guess we're going to go with achievements. My bad. I guess we're going to go with radicalism, huh? You read this one, please go ahead. And this one. As well as this one, too. 
It was a long silence after the agent spoke, punctuated with a deep sigh from Lawrence as he lowered the pistol. He, lo he took a long look out of the desert waste that surrounded them, the wind sweeping over the dunes like a never-ending ocean of dust. He could remember Algiers just as vividly as the day it happened. The screams, the blood, and the acrid smell of explosives that hung in the air. The French garrison had refused to surrender. His body shook when the recall held the commanders simply shrugged and even gave them the order to open fire. Tens of thousands of tons of steel hellfire raining down on a city of nearly a million. He just sat back and watched, and he swore he would never raise a rifle for the Empire again. The agents left silently, riding off home to their masters. Lawrence continued on, though they never came, poring over the endless tomes of obscure Arabian history. Perhaps he figured that one day he might wake, make the trip to Mecca once his terrible succession war business blows over. The contents of the Lawrence report submitted to the ISS were unremarkable. A few questions and statements on the Civil Great War fossil lost in his old madness in a savage desert. The report was filed away among the millions of uh, reports in the IIS archives, disappearing into an ocean of bureaucracy, and with it, the last memories of Colonel Lawrence. All our subjects' provinces, are, to me, were not worth one dead Englishman. First successful satellite. At a million months of research and trials, one of the four rockets managed to breach the atmosphere and successfully deploy a communication satellite in orbit. Ground controls ordered to receive data on our current orbit aside. <clears throat> or stable for the next few months, of course. We'll go, keep going. The occasion is momentous to say the least, as this marks our nation's first successfully deployed orbital satellite. Likely our enemies will see this growing orbital gap and rise and meet us, so now the folks will be launched into a human being in orbit. Got a good proof of concept, now let's get a man up there. Nice. Happy 1934, everybody. There you go. Future in China. Although we defeated the North Vietnamese. Ooh, this would do. Uh, rebellion. We cannot allow the people of Indochina to ever have the mere inclination to betray the British overlords. There will be another potential uprising. Some of our cabinets suggest we grant the region a greater level of autonomy and representation in the Imperial Confederation. So this is simply the old way of things. I want to, I want to have a direct rule about Empire of Vietnam in Cambodia. Beautiful. Let's activate our current non-combat satellite in orbit. If we have one active that has not expanded uh, its art abilities. Now let's do it for funsies. Moderate performance. Tension's a little high, but that's okay. Twenty days left. That's not bad. The British military has proven unremarkable since the end of the Great War, though we maintain power projection. Our forces have languished as something as a bouquet army once again without conscription. If we're prepared for the coming conflicts, we need to reform our forces to a better state of readiness. Let's get started, shall we? The process of reforming our forces will now be kept finally into action. The backbone of any nation's working class, our Britain is known as a state which extorts its own citizens to maximize the nation's profits. To prevent this miscarriage of justice, we shall present to Parliament an extension of expansion of the workers' rights charter to make sure no worker ever again shall suffer under his employer. Ah, so we can choose which one we want to do. Dominate the skies or support our boys on the ground. Cool. Bleeding edge armor development. Well, it depends. Do we want to go with automation or do we want to get a st eye away from it? Ban the carrier fleet. Ministry of Technology. That's good. So if it has small companies, not bad. So with the private sector? Well, probably not. Post scarcity ideal. Oh, that's completed the New Jerusalem. A future in techno socialism. Well, with the way we've gone. Well, wow, weekly map out plus a thousand. Let me know which way we should go. Over to another decision and automations of the future. Force the mines open and introduce the other jobs. Discourage domestic automation. Contracts for concessions. Humans need not apply. Let me know which way we should go with all of these over here. Synthesis the progress and tradition versus the blurring the lines of corporation and state. The political power is not bad. That's actually really good. It's not bad either. And as well as all this stuff. 
Women's Filler Job Department. Weekly Manpower, that's pretty good. Bread and Circuses Program. New Life Waits for You in the Colonies. Not terrible either. Staff Imperial Hotel Company. Telescreen Company, as well as Corporate Telescreen Grants. So let me know which one we should do. So, But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. This is pretty good, too. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll see what else we can do with a radical socialist of Britain. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.